This is a story of a Commodore 64C. I was given this computer after it had sat outside in the rural countryside of Oregon for a very long time. The machine was oddly heavy, meaning it's likely it was filled with natural debris. The top of the machine didn't look too bad other than being filthy and missing several keys. Flipping it over, I started to see that things are going to be rough inside. The rust seen here gives away how the machine looks on the inside. Removing the top cover starts to reveal some of the horror the machine has experienced. Everything that could have rusted has rusted. We're also starting to see the signs of nature taking over the inside of the machine. I struggled to remove the keyboard brackets, but once I got them out, it was just rust for miles. The machine was also crawling with ants, meaning there was likely an ant colony on the inside. With the top RF shield removed, I was blown away at the amount of pine needles and dirt inside. The rusted RF shield has left its mark on the chips, leaving them and the PCB coated in rust. Ants had indeed set up shop inside this machine, and thousands of ants were now coming out of the machine now I disturbed them. I unfortunately only have pictures of this disassembly, or you would be seeing them trying to run for safety. The RF shield on the underside of the motherboard is so rusted, it fell apart in my hands as I touched it. It was once soldered onto the edge of the PCB, but now it just pulls away like a thin piece of paper. The cardboard that was once sandwiched between the shield and the PCB is also gone, allowing a nice spot for the ants to live. I took the motherboard and used my garden hose to spray the PCB as clean as I could get it. Here you see me air drying the board in my basement after I had washed it. I soaked it in 91% isopropyl alcohol to help displace the water. Looking at the board, I had a thought. Could it be possible that this C64 still worked? Some people say these machines are very fragile and easily fail, but let's find out together if this computer that sat out in a field for who knows how many years could still possibly work. So here's the board on the bench. The first problem off the bat was I checked the fuse, and as you can see, it's a rusty mess. I tested continuity here. With my multimeter, there was no current passing between these, but the fuse is actually good. It's just it's so rusty, it can't make any contact. So I removed this, and I found a brand new fuse. But unfortunately, the socket's also really rusty, so I couldn't put in the new fuse in. I still didn't have continuity between these two pins. So I have a new fuse here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use clip leads. This is super ghetto. Like that. And another one like this. Okay, we'll just lay that back over there. I have sprayed contact cleaner on the power switch here and in the power socket, and I sprayed a whole bunch in the video socket. And let's see what happens. Let's see. Oh, NTSC. <gasps> wow, wow, oh my God. Okay, the connection is very bad on the uh, video here. Probably needs me to unplug it and plug it back in a few times because I did spray deoxid in there and you know literally some physical insertion and removal actually goes quite a long way to spray a bit more in there there we go wow okay <laughs> I can't even believe it. It's working. I mean, I, I wasn't even shocked a second ago when it came up, but this thing is working. Oh my God, I can't even believe it. So I, there's obviously one problem is there's no flashing cursor. And I think people can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the, what, 6526A? And that's a socketed chip on this board. The rust on the pins is probably preventing it from getting contact. So I'm going to yank that and spray deoxid in there and put that rusty chip back in. And we're just going to see if that fixes it. Okay, actually, I didn't even take it out. I just used deoxid and kind of pulled it out of the socket a little bit and pushed it back in. Let's see what happens now. All right, so still nothing. So let me yank it out completely and see what happens. That is one rough chip. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, maybe the socket's shot. I don't know. 
but uh, <laughs> let me put this back in. Okay, so I sort of pulled it out, put it back in, didn't seem to help, but I have it pulled out quite a bit of the way, and it just in the socket though, and now look at what's happening. I turn on the computer, we're getting garbage, which is fine. That means that there's most likely just bad contact on those pins. So let me just fiddle with this some more and maybe we'll actually get this working just as is without even replacing that chip. So I have some sandpaper here and I'm just gonna sand the pins down a little bit. See if that makes any difference whatsoever. Okay, so after sanding the pins, I put it back in. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, we have flashing cursor. So let me plug in a keyboard and just see if I can even do anything. Okay, we got a flashing cursor. Oh my god. Okay, some of the letters aren't working. But <laughs> it's typing. So I would imagine there are still bad connections on the pins because each it's a matrix keyboard. All right, I've done a little bit more work. I've polished the pins on this chip and that seems to have fixed it. Um, now the issue, which we actually saw before I polished was that some of the keys weren't working. That appears to be the keyboard connector. The pins are just really oxidized and corroded. And even with deoxit, it's still not making good contact. But if I put the uh, connector on and kind of tilt it and move it around a little bit, now we are actually getting all of the keys working. ASDF. There we go. Oh, L doesn't seem to work. Yeah, so I'm going to try to figure out how I can make this better. Maybe I'm going to put a bunch of flux and flood solder onto the pins or something. Maybe that'll give them a fresh coating. I don't know. I also need to figure out a way to get the uh, fuse holder looking shiny again. I, I tried putting the polishing wheel in there and it just didn't really work. I can't really get a good uh, purchase on the rusty parts. Okay, my idea of uh, flux and heat and flooding solder all over these did the trick. There were still some parts of this that weren't rusty, so I made sure to get the solder on there and then I flooded it all over the rest of the contact. And sure enough, this doesn't fit in quite perfectly now when I push it down it's just sort of a little cockeyed but it's in there very firmly and uh, the computer now works with this in the stall so great one step closer using solder on these pins that did not work they are just too oxidized even with tons of flux and heat nothing like solder would not stick so taking the keyboard connector off good old sandpaper I just sanded the pins on both sides I mean this is um, 1500 grit so it's pretty fine, but I just did it on both sides of the pins. I couldn't really do the insides. I guess if I really wanted to work harder, I would do the insides, but I did the outsides. Plug the keyboard counter back in. Let's take a look. Yes, we have all keys working. Great. So everything seems to work now. Okay, so the next step is to load some software onto this thing. I don't have a diagnostic cartridge, so I'm going to plug a disk drive in, and we're going to see if we can load some software, maybe see if the sound is working. I mean, I don't know. SID chip might be dead. Um, this should be the SID chip here, I think, that's soldered on without a socket. That's annoying. But uh, let's run some tests and see how it goes. But Fuse is working. Keyboard is working. There's some serious rust around these boards here. But yeah, okay, next up, software. Okay, it's a full-on test time. So I have a 1571 disk drive, and this is connected here to the IEC port on the rusted motherboard. I have my favorite SID music disc here, so let's stick that in. I got uh, this keyboard connected here. Uh, we got the video and the audio hooked up to my Sony PVM, regular power supply, and I do have a couple heat sinks on the SID, or I'm sorry, the VIC-2 chip here, just because they get hot and... But, uh, yep, yeah, let's turn it on. Okay, good. Disk drive accessed. And load star comma eight. Floppy's accessing. Without Jiffy DOS, this load process is a little slow. Okay, 
It's finished loading. Let's do run. And turn the volume up on the Sony. <laughs> oh my god, it's working. This is normal that it's black for a second here. <laughs> I can't even believe it. It works. I I I was I didn't know if the SID was bad or or what. And the Vic, you know, we've just been looking at the blue uh, basic prompt, but we got some graphics going on here, sound, and I, I'm I know this demo inside and out. This is exactly how it should sound, so I don't think the SID is damaged at all. Well, there we go. This uh, C64 was left in a field, getting rained on, getting garbage and dirt inside of it. It was home to an ant farm. I do not know how long it was out in the elements, but the man who gave this to me, he couldn't remember, just because he used to deal in picking up old stuff and scrapping them and recycling and stopped doing that a long time ago. So this just sat out there getting filthy and in the elements. It actually fully functions. I mean, look, look at the state of this. And the copper traces. There's a lot of corrosion on here. And somehow, through all that, look at all this. All the coppers being eaten away. This thing still works. So some people may feel that Commodore 64s are fragile and break a lot. But this is a testament to the reliability of these computers. Every part is original on here except I changed the fuse to get rid of the rusty one. The old fuse was actually fine, but a new fuse, and I fixed those pins up on the... and fixed the pins up on the keyboard connector. So anyhow, if you thought this was interesting, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you have similar stories about such horribly treated machines still working. I'd love to hear them. Put them in the comment section below. You can subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye!